We've got 10 more custom dual class cards in this one. Some crazy legendaries. A hero card here with Lothraxian. I thought this would be the most common dual class character we saw. He's a demon who turned into a paladin. It's a perfect fit for warlock and paladin, but almost nobody made Lothraxian cards except Illidan here. This would be a four mana hero card. Of course, dual class for Warlock and Paladin. Not a real combination, but a super fun one to explore because they do seem so at odds with one another. And uh, five armor, battle cry for the rest of the game. After a friendly minion dies, give your hero divine shield. Now this is a mechanic that we've explored a few times, I think so far in our custom card reviews. Uh, the idea is that it would operate just like divine shield on a minion, I presume, where it's just, you know, there's only one layer, you can't stack it up. So uh, maybe every turn you get kind of a Divine Shield, almost like a bulwark of Azanoth proc of sorts where it denies one instance of damage from your opponent. If they're like a ping class, it probably doesn't make a big difference. But if they're only running 8-8s, you know, it could block like an attack from an 8-8. So against classes like Priest, who are maybe only playing bigger stuff in the late game or something uh, with no ping access, it could be perfect to help you deny multiple big hits of damage over the course of the game as long as you have minions dying. Now on that side of things, let's go to the hero powers here, which are two alternate hero powers that would swap each turn. They are Redeem and Condemn. Uh, of course, you know, another great tale of the two sides of this card for Paladin and Warlock. Uh, you're going to redeem an imp here. It looks like this artwork is so sick. It's a purple imp uh, with like a yellow kind of shield or, you know, aura around it. Like the color scheme on this is just so perfect. And that would summon you a 1-1 imp with divine shield. So a nice... Uh, upgrade to sort of the base paladin hero power, um, you know, arguably different, but similar to the Galarcon Warlock hero power. You're getting, you know, one minion, but it's stickier instead of two one ones. And then alternatively, you have Condemn here, uh, which shows the Silverhand recruit being killed. Uh, so instead of an imp getting divine shield, it's a silver hand recruit getting killed. Like the flavor on this is just home run, 100% home run. And that summons you a one one recruit with life steal, but you immediately destroy. The recruit. So this hero power, you might say, well, that seems kind of pointless, but remember, this is giving you a guaranteed way to activate the divine shield off of Lothraxian because after a friendly minion dies, boom, you're getting that divine shield. So every other turn you can proc it yourself if you don't have you know minions to trade on board or some other way to sacrifice your own minions, particularly in Paladin. It might be hard to kill off your own stuff sometimes if you're behind on board. So this gives you a way to make sure you can do that consistently. Alternatively, you get a great minion for buffs and follow-ups with Divine Shield on the other turn. So a uh, pretty cool combination of all this. It really does feel like a true dual class card capturing the, the kind of worlds of both of these. You're taking sacrifices by killing minions, but you're turning them into Divine Shields for Paladins. It just comes together really, really well. Now, from a power level standpoint, you know, it just kind of depends. It is only four mana, so it's not a big commitment to get, you know, an occasionally upgraded hero power. Also, the recruits with lifesteal that are being killed, remember those can be in like a uh, raised dead res pool uh, where you could bring them back to life and then you have a lifesteal minion aboard that's still great for being buffed in Paladin. So even that has some interesting applications. I don't know if it's a good card necessarily. It feels like the hero powers maybe aren't good enough. Maybe the divine shield doesn't go far enough. You know, it's just like a ping away from doing nothing every once in a while. But nonetheless, the home run flavor on this just makes this card amazing in my mind. I absolutely love it. So next up here, we've got another great iconic character. It's Broxigar uh, from Gnomich. This is a seven mana eight six for warrior and druid. And another great combination. If you don't know Broxigar, he's this orc warrior dude and he gets the ax of Cenarius to slay a bunch of demons. That's uh, an axe from Malfurion and Cenarius. It's obviously very druid-like. So you got warrior and druid coming together. Perfect lore connection here. And uh, Broxigar himself is a seven mana, eight, six, so pretty aggressively statted dude. He's got a death rattle that equips a six, two axe of Cenarius. So this feels a little bit like, uh, you know, a Tyrion style card, a little bit cheaper, maybe bigger stats, no divine shield. And you're getting a really nice weapon. So instead of uh, Ashbringer, which, you know, it doesn't have an effect, the axe of Cenarius actually has a nice effect. After attacking, you gain armor equal to the damage dealt. So this can actually be that instant six armor, which could be nice. 12 armor over a couple turns. Uh, if you're a druid, you're buffing that with your hero power. You're actually gaining even more 
uh, armor potentially, and then warrior can also upgrade weapons with upgrades and various other weapon buffs. So each class is have ways to interact with this axe of scenarius that actually increases the amount of armor gained, which is really cool because it's not only fusing these classes together from a lore standpoint, but it's fusing them together from a mechanics standpoint as well as both classes that utilize armor and both classes that utilize attacks. So uh, this card just feels kind of perfect. Again, fusing together a, an unusual dual class combination. I can't imagine another way to do this. I don't know if it's perfectly balanced necessarily. It actually kind of looks okay. It'd be good, I think, with the ax, but it's delayed, etc. cetera. So um, man, what another just fantastically cool dual class card. And frankly, the hits keep on coming. This one is War Machine uh, from Kogeti. It's a 10 mana legendary for Warlock and Warrior, which is why it's called War Machine. They both start with war. <laughs> Just amazing. Uh, it's a taunt. It's a 15-15. I love giant, you know, Timmy style cards like this. Uh, big bodies. It's a mech, of course, because it's um, Fell Reaver there from Outland. And it reads, whenever this minion takes damage, your hero gains armor of that amount. So uh, the way I think this works is if you take, say, if it takes five damage, you trade a 5-5 five, five into it. Um, it's not only going to kill the 5-5, five, five, of course, normally, but you're going to gain five armor as uh, the warlock slash warrior player. And the idea I see here from like a fantasy standpoint is like they're attacking this big metal machine. Scraps and pieces of metal are falling on the ground you're equipping those as armor as the person controlling it. So as it takes damage, you're gaining its kind of body, uh, its armor as defense, which is just a really cool idea for a card. And, um, you know, it's a big 10 mana taunt. Like we've seen, you know, most of these aren't playable. They feel pretty slow. But if you can ever cheat this into play, like in a big warrior deck, for instance, it would be absolutely perfect. Because if your opponent doesn't save like some strict hard removal for it, if they start having to trade into this, not only are you denying them 15 damage in trades, but you're also gaining an additional 15 armor as well, which makes a card like this really hard to deal with. So I don't know if it'd be good enough. It might still be too slow outside of very, very specific circumstances. But I think from a flavor standpoint and feel standpoint, again, this card is just an absolute home run. And tying the dual classes together based on the similarities of their class name is ridiculous, but it works really, really well. So moving on here to United in Cause from Davon. This is a combination of Demon Hunter and Paladin, another new combination. A one mana spell here. Not many spells, by the way. Most people were submitting minions. Uh, it's summon a 1-1 one, one Silverhand Recruit with Taunt and a 1-1 one, one Illidari with Rush. And this card's just so cleanly designed. It just feels perfect to me. Uh, it's a design we've kind of seen in the past of like Lost in the Jungle, but even better, of course, because they're not just 1-1 minions, they're 1-1 minions with additional upsides, taunt, and rush. I think this is a fairly high power card that both of these classes could probably use in aggro decks really well, but I love that it's just the, the base mechanic, you know, the hero power, silver hand recruit for Paladin, we've seen that a thousand times with taunt, and we've seen Illidari's with rush in, you know, token demon hunter is something that might eventually one day be good, and it's perfectly fused, and the artwork on this is just absolutely insane. It's a paladin and a demon hunter. It's like Illidan, and um, I'm guessing that's Turali on there facing off against a big threat. So paladins and demon hunters both want to kill demons. They do it via their uh, united cause here as a one-mana spell. It's just perfect. I mean, this is another one that I would not be remotely shocked if this appeared in Hearthstone. It looks so freaking realistic, and of course, it's power crept adequately for Hearthstone these days. All right, so next up here is the Twisted Polymorph from Nickelodeon, a six mana spell for Warlock and Mage, another cool combination. And it transforms a minion into a 1-1 one, one Twisted Sheep. Uh, what is a Twisted Sheep, you say? Well, first off, amazing to find artwork of a scary sheep. I don't know how you did that, but well done, sir. It's a one mana 1-1 one, one beast, much like a normal sheep, but it has a death rattle that pulls adjacent minions into the Twisting Nether. So instead of polymorphing the target you really care about with this card, you'd polymorph the thing next to the target or targets that you really care about, and then presumably ping off your Twisted Sheep via, say, a Mortal Coil for Warlock, or of course the Hero Power for Mage, and you're gonna remove two other bigger things. So it's kind of like a betrayal almost in a way, 
And I don't know for sure if pull the adjacent minions into the Twisting Nether means that they're being like removed from the game, something like the Reno hero card, or if they're merely just being destroyed like Twisting Nether as a card does. I'll leave that up to you guys to argue about and decide what you think it means. Perhaps some clarification on the card would be nice. I'm going to assume they're just destroyed like Twisting Nether, which makes this kind of a less of a transform style effect and more of a uh, multiple minion destruction style effect, but also occasionally a transform style effect too, because if there is that big awesome target and you just desperately need to polymorph it, you can. And the Twisted Sheep could be an upside right now where there's still some small stuff on the side. Or it could be banked upside, where you leave the Twisted Sheep on board, your opponent can't kill the Twisted Sheep and they have to play something next to it on the following turn. Then you kill the Twisted Sheep and you kill the next big thing that they play as well. So all kinds of high friction plays, really strategic implications around positioning and timing and what you want to target. I love cards like that in Hearthstone. This feels like a really cool combination of the Twisted World of Warlock and the Polymorph World of Mage, fusing them together into something very creative, very fun, and very artistically fitting. Next up here is Garsul Fate Lord from Key Lime Pie. <laughs> very thematically disconnected names. It's a seven mana four form for Priest and Warlock, so a dual class combination we know. And the battle card reads, for the rest of the game, all damage and healing of your cards and effects are swapped. So basically here you get to flip the world of Warlock and Priest, which I think is really cool, taking uh, the kind of strengths of each of these and turning them backwards, which uh, we know uh, we have cards right now in the real dual class set that kind of combine them let's, where it's your hero changed health as opposed to took damage or healed. And that was a really cool combination, but this kind of does it a different way where it flips them. And of course, lots of implications there. If you think about Warlock, suddenly Life Tap is going to heal you instead of dealing damage to you. And suddenly that's amazing, right? And you have all these cards um, that self-damage you like Flame Imps and you could use them as like heals instead. And that can be great for things like Flesh Giants because instead of taking a ton of damage in the late game, you play this, you flip the script and now you're healing back all that damage that you took while still enabling a lot of your cards, although disabling others like Disease Vulture suddenly would be much, much harder to pull off unless you ran some healing in your deck, then you could use some healing to deal damage to yourself as needed. And, um, you know, as a seven mana four, four, like this is coming down really late in the game. It might be hard to like build or structure a deck around a card like this one, but I still think it'd be really fun for it to exist just off of that random Galakrond or off of whatever random generation effect in Warlock, how much it's gonna change the game and uh, make you rethink everything and be really careful. But it also could be something that sets up combo enablers where you find ways to deal extra damage to your opponent via healing cards. There may in fact even be some broken combinations here. I'll again, let you guys sort that out. Uh, but it's a fun idea nonetheless that uh, takes this dual class combination in a different and unique and very fitting and fun way as well. Next up here is the Gamekeeper Aliran from Magic Milk. It is a four mana five four for Hunter and Druid. And his battle card reads, copy all the beasts in your deck. Then you will cast tracking at the start of each turn instead of drawing. That tracking should probably be capitalized, maybe have some quotes, but I think we all know what this one means, the Hunter card tracking. So essentially at the beginning of each turn, you would discover one card and discard the two others. So this would be a way to really ensure that you're drawing the exact things that you want more consistently, getting to pick your draw, obviously very powerful. Normally that would have the huge downside of discarding uh, you know, two cards every time you drew one and you'd fatigue yourself out stupidly quickly or risk losing a lot of valuable assets. But in this case with Aliran, he's doubling the size of your deck, at least in regards to beasts. So if you have a lot of beasts, you're giving your deck enough depth and extra cards that you can afford to track without completely burning through everything. Not to mention if you have some really high impact beasts, if you want exactly multiple King Crushes, for instance, you could copy multiple King Crushes and find them more reliably using the tracking for whatever kind of crazy shenanigan or combo you're looking to achieve. Maybe it's something cheaper, but you get the idea. This allows you to play the game in a different way, manipulate your draws into specific things. Maybe it's a combo piece. Maybe it's something for guardian animals. Aliran would provide that. And I love the idea of more beast support across um, these two classes. We actually got a lot with Guardian Animals and Shando Wildclaw, but it's not really being played as a beast deck because Guardian Animals is really more about ramp 
and just these crazy swing turns. The fact that they're beasts is just, um, you know, coincidence, really. It's like Twilight Runner could have been anything. Guardian Animals could have been anything. It's just a couple beasts that you're running for specifically this card. Hunter's kind of left out altogether for beasts lately. So having another card that makes you play a beast deck or a Shando buff deck or something that actually cares about having more than two different beasts in your deck would be awesome. And I think Illyrian would really help support that for two classes that are so beast centric. All right, next up here is the Soul Armor Specialist from Gorda the Great. Another Warlock and Warrior card. Five mana, four, six with Spell Burst. Gain armor equal to the damage dealt by the spell. So we have here a way to convert spell damage into life gain, which Warlock is awesome at, but Warlock doesn't deal with armor. Warrior does, so we're kind of shifting that. It's soul armor instead of, uh, say, like, lifesteal, which is a really cool way thematically to connect these two. Now, before you freak out, stop writing your comments. We all know. We all get it. You're the 47,000th guy to start spamming shield slam, shield slam, shield slam in the comments. Back it up. Backspace it out. We all know. Yes, yes, yes. Shield slam is a thing. And yes... If you have 50 armor and you play Soul Armor Specialist and you shield slam something for 50, you're going to gain another 50 armor. And you probably think that's OP. And you might be right. <laughs> but let me let me make a counter argument. If you have 50 armor, is it really that big of a deal to get 100? <laughs> In other words, like if you've stabilized that hard as like a really greedy control warrior, um, do you need soul armor specialist? Like, is it really going to make that big of a difference? I think it's way, way more relevant that you gain like an extra five armor off of this card usually than an extra 50. In other words, like, you know, you're clinging on to your last 10 or 12 health. You got five armor from a shield block. You play this in a shield slam and you go up to 17 instead of 12 that's where this card actually matters when you're like desperately trying to stay alive and you need any little extra hit of armor that you can get for both warrior and warlock probably i don't think the situations where you have 50 armor already are going to really change the game state all that much by going to 100 like yeah maybe you buy some extra time and fatigue but it's like okay you earned it you got the 50 game on go get some more with the specialist right your opponent didn't play any minions the entire game you've earned it so um if you read this card and it said gain five armor off of the shield slam that you combo with it, it's a much more reasonably balanced card, much healthier card. And then, you know, occasionally it hits you for, you know, six, eight, 10, 15 even. And it's like a pretty strong card because we've had a lot of cards in the past in the mid game that give you five to 10 armor. They're not crazy OP. I think 99% of the situations, soul armor specialist would be fine as well. If you care about the shield slam thing, if you think it's too ridiculous or too, uh, too high of an upside, Feel free to spam it. Go ahead and unbackspace your comments. Retype it. Tell me how stupid this is. That's all fine, too. I actually don't think it would be that crazy, and I think it'd be sort of fun to get 50 armor off Shield Slam, to be honest. So um, I get it, but uh, that's the Soul Armor Specialist. Take it or leave it. So there you go, folks. That wraps it up uh, for part two here of the dual class cards. We had some great designs all around this time. I loved how fun some of these were. Some great characters, some great utilization of different mechanics across each of these classes, some cards I'd love to see in the game, some I'd be scared to see, but nonetheless, I recognize just how cool that they are. Uh, that said, if you have thoughts on these cards, of course, always share uh, all that down below. Tell me what's broken, tell me what's not. I love to hear it, love to get uh, everybody's opinions there. Uh, that said, I know you're probably wondering what the next uh, submissions will be for custom cards. Just stay tuned. We may be pivoting a little bit about how I do custom cards. Uh, join my Discord channel if you're really interested in learning about custom cards in the future. I may also post something here on YouTube, but uh, I'm going to drop a link to the Discord down in the uh, in the description below. If you want to submit cards in the future, be sure to join there, and I'll update you as we uh, maybe change how we do all this in the near future. That said, uh, thanks much as always for submitting awesome designs. Thanks much as always for watching, and until next time, game on.